In September 2015, member countries of the United Nations adopted the Sustainable Development Goals 2030. And since then, Nigeria says it is committed to achieving these global goals, maybe on paper, because the grim picture of what the situation really is stares you in the face, from the cities to the rural communities. On this episode of Community Forum, we're in Yola, Adamawa State, and we're going to be taking a look at how the government is able to achieve just one of those goals, which is quality education. Through desert-like landscapes and scanty greens, we arrive Yola, the capital of Adamawa State, in search of answers to some of the problems that community around here face. This is Jimeta, a town in Yola, north local government area of the state, and it lies in the banks of the river Benue. From here, we head to Fufori, a town in Adamawa State. The focus this time lies on quality education for children, especially the girl child. In the state, basic education is set to be free in all public schools. How accessible is this policy for the girl child in the face of many campaigns to increase girl-child enrollment and retention in schools. We are at the government secondary school for Fori. Established in 1977, it is now a spectacle of the lack of maintenance needed for a citadel of learning. A plethora of abandoned roofless buildings are all around. Iron bunks are wasting away at the passages. GSS Fufuri is the most densely populated school in the local government, yet it remains in the throes of decaying facilities. Parents are reluctant to send their children to school because of the infrastructural decay, poor learning outcomes and rising insecurity.
I met Sadatu, a student here who has been attending trainings aimed at empowering the girl child. She tells me about her dreams and aspirations. I'm schooling in this GSS4. What I have learned is that they want to educate girls, child, girls' child education. They want them to educate. Not, the, not just that they should get married after their secondary school. They should go to tertiary institution. When I'm educated, I can, when I get married, I can teach my children. So if I'm, if I'm not educated, I can't able to teach my children. When they go to school, when they give them assignments, something like that, how can I able to help them? But when I'm educated, I should help them at least. I wanted to be a medical doctor. Actually, the school needs fans, and the hostel, girls' hostel, it needs toilets. Do you that it, there is no toilet that is functioning here, and the hostel needs more buildings, more blocks, because the, this one is only one block they are using. And it need, they need beds. They don't have good beds to sleep. And, and also they need the security. Yeyukuma sana andazasui ampani deshi. Amma yawanchung yara. The reason why the girls in the community do not go to school is that they are not empowered. Their mothers usually give them ways to sell so they can have money for clothing and other essentials. This is the reason we go door to door to sensitize them on the importance of girl-child education. But there is a problem. When they start attending, they stop after a while because they are financially incapable of sending them through school. Some do not have the money to even buy uniforms. Most children in this community do not further their education after secondary school. I don't think there is any girl in this community that has more than secondary school education. I'm calling on the government to help provide uniforms, pens, and books for the children. Another problem is that our male children, even after completing their degrees and diplomas, don't get employed. And the ones that didn't attend school scorn them. Lack of employment discourages people from sending their children to school here. When we go for advocacy on school enrollment, they tell us how our children who are educated are not employed. They also tell us that the educated children are not different from the uneducated ones as they all go to the farm. Young girls that are newly married can't travel far to attend school because their husbands will not allow them. If there were schools in this town, some people will allow their children to complete their education even without jobs. It is a source of concern for the leadership of the school. Uh, you, you came and see the school by your eyes. So the school was established in 1977. We are expecting the intervention of the previous government, but they could not. It's only this present government have started intervening. We are inside a uh, gas dormitory and we are having about five blocks of five blocks of the dormitories but only one we are now using because of lack of uh, intervention by the previous government. This present administration 
they have so shown a serious design of intervention. His Excellency the Governor himself, he came himself with his SSG, he inspected the site, he went and sent his commissioner, the commissioner came and inspected. So a, a contractor was sent to come and make his estimate. So we are, we are now waiting, waiting for the, for the government uh, uh, takeoff. What we need uh, on immediate in intervention is issue of fencing and the issue of uh, renovating of these classes and this guest house. We are only using this block. So like how many girls do you have in the boarding house? 436. So 436 of them have to use this one? Uh, this is what we are using this. Anybody who is using toilet outside, you know it has uh, health implications. It's very dangerous to health. But what we have been using is uh, we are giving them the toilet isers, we keep them on, cleaning the environment, and they are managing the little toilet that we have. And the, the major problem that is confronting the school is lack of fence. You know, animals, vehicles are trooping in at any time, whether in the day, in the daytime or in the night time. So uh, what, what the area that this school needs is the, the, the depressing issue, immediate intervention is the issue of fencing. Secondly, renovation of these classes. You have seen uh, two blocks of classroom have been renovated by all boys. You have seen it. Federal government have intervened by providing a, a laboratory uh, computers. But the obvious problems are a challenge for girls to reach their highest potential. Gaskia Tabangar and Karatu in a so inganta. If there will be an intervention, it should be on improved learning outcomes. I want them to look at the quality of teaching. A senior secondary school graduate can't write a simple letter or communicate fluently in English. I feel everything is wrong from the quality of teachers to teaching aids. Although the students themselves have a great problem, when the teacher teaches in English and they don't understand, they just switch to the Hausa language. We have few female teachers compared to the male teachers. Having more female teachers will improve the quality of education. Now we'll proceed to take a look at the condition of the hostel block in use. We are even expecting some supply from the from the ministry. Last uh, just a month before we close, okay. they call us about the issue of uh, supply of the new mattresses. So they are expecting maybe when we resume, we use as a supply. But some of the students use mats to sleep. Uh, when when yes, they use they use mats. To they, sleep. Use, yes, they use yes, this is very true. We don't have them enough. Okay, so there are no enough mats. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not enough. Yeah. You see the, the bed that we are using, you see the structure, you see the, the, the ceilings, you see the the, 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 the all this thing you have seen it. So as I'm telling you, this is the exact report that we are giving to the government. It's left to government to make an immediate intervention. But in the side of feeding, we don't have we don't have problem with feeding. Honestly speaking, that is very true. This is the area where we have problem. Lack of fence, lack of renovation of the other classes, lack of renovation of the whole toilets and the, the, the structures. That is the area where we have problem. Some guests, as I have said, they are using mats. Look at this. This side. They are using this side. They are using intervention. Mm -hmm. 
other government servants are no governmental organizations with their respective intervention in the area that we have seen where we have deficiencies. Meals are also prepared in this rundown structure for boarding students. Local NGOs are tracking the state's spending on education and encouraging government officials to invest in gender responsive school infrastructure so that learning areas can be conducive and safe for girls to reach their full potentials in life. In 2020, with the support from Malala Fund, we started a campaign on girl child education in Adama State. The objective is very simple, to ensure that there's increase in enrollment, retention and completion of secondary school um, for our girls in Adama State. Today we work in two focal local governments, which is Fufure and Yola South. And for the past two years, we've discovered the threat in our education. It's happening when you go to schools where our children are supposed to learn and have quality education to improve their life and provide them with life skills. And you notice that everything seems to be at, at zero state, from the state of um, classrooms the, to the learning outcomes to so also access to wash facilities. For a girl child to stay in school, she, we all know that she must have access to wash. But today we go to schools like Fufure, um, government um, secondary school Fufure, for instance, and you notice that in a, in a school where we have over 400 um, girls as boarding schools and they have no access to wash facilities, how will these girls stay in school? Or in, in a school with over 2,000 students and they do not have enough classrooms for the students. They have just um, if, uh, about three, 36 um, teachers teaching over 2,000 um, students. Do we really think there's going to be learning outcome? Or in a school where we, we have um, a whole lot of um, agitation for the increase of girls to go to school, but these schools are not available. We've been to communities where they don't even have school, but the community people are willing to send their children to school. While the Parents Teachers Association has in time past made efforts to renovate some structures, the school still remains in this deplorable state. We have uh, secondary schools about uh, 52 in Fufore local government. The population of the, this in, it varies from one uh, school to the other, but uh, Fufore is the most densely populated uh, school. There are numerous problems we are having, uh, especially the government, I mean guest hostels in Fufore. The guest hostel is so bad that uh, it needs adding attention. They, the girls, they don't have toilets in the school. They used to go out. So it is so pathetic to see uh, students with the problem they are having insecurity now. There are so many because they are being harassed. Some of them are being raped outside the school when they go for to to ease themselves. If you go to the school, you you will see uh, the contributions the. PT have met with the uh, to renovate certain school uh, some classes and also we liaise with the uh, all boys they also we gathered with them they contributed to renovate two classrooms also two blocks of classrooms two blocks connected development came to our community about three times. We met in Yola, we also met here. So I took them round to the school to see things for themselves. And uh, they also promised me that uh, they are going to forward our issue to the headquarters to see what they can do to assist in the 
in the problems that we are facing here. It's very few. It's not. It's very negligible. The assistance that they are rendering is very negligible. Most of the times, we is, we only write and submit to the ministry. The State Universal Basic Education Board says it is not unaware of the problems, but it is striving to improve an educational infrastructure. The first time I went around, I didn't like what I saw because everything was in shambles, dilapidation. Children were sitting on bare floor, some on stones, some studying under the trees. Buildings were dilapidated and uh, there were no furniture. And uh, I knew something must be wrong somewhere and something serious must be done. The government had been assisting. So we, text, we took stock of dilapidated schools, schools that needed fencing, new construction, computer, and what have you. We wrote to the government that we needed a matching grant, which federal government will give 50, and then the state will give 50. In these periods, so many classrooms were built, so many renovations were made, so many fences were made, so many sports equipment were bought, so many agri implements were bought, so many computer centers were built. And there has been training and retraining of staff. And we are working gradually to make sure that if we don't give education what it deserves, we are just wasting our time. And our future is going to be doomed. By the grace of God, things are improving. Only that the damage was too much before the current governor came in order to take over. But gradually and gradually, it is coming to positive fruition. Hope continues to rise for girl child education as efforts continue to tackle stereotypes that prevent girls from going to school. Mm -hmm.